I came across some of the uh, old footage I had for the uh, French Broad River trip that uh, uh, I went on last year. I think I got four days out of it, three nights, four days, I believe. And um, honestly, I was just gonna let the footage go uh, because it wasn't necessarily uh, the best trip uh, that I've been on, and I've only been on a couple. Um, but for that one, it was, I had just, let's see, we did the trip, I think it was in July. I had just moved down earlier that year and was spearheading uh, the move to North Carolina from Missouri. One goes, they all go. And then, of course, in the uh, end of May, um, when things lined up, I then moved uh, the rest of my family down. And then, of course, uh, through the course of those uh, couple of months, uh, we took a couple trips back and forth to Missouri, so it was about a thousand miles. Um, a trip and some things kind of transpired that were difficult but uh, you know it all worked out good but I think the the trip um, unfortunately there was a lot of things that was going on in my head and there were there were um, a lot of other issues that were that were trying to uh, fall into place but anyways uh, in my head space I wasn't where I think I needed to be um, and the thing about it is is it's it's really not difficult for me to get out of that head space no it is difficult for me to get out of that type of headspace uh, as it is. Um, you know, I would probably say that I'm one of those people who are a little bit, uh, um, it's, it's easier for us to become anxious or nervous in situations, um, a little bit easier for us than maybe some other people and stuff. Anyway, so all that was happening at the same time, and then um, I decided to go on this trip, uh, made some choices that would allow me to go on this trip, and. Um, Anyways, so I'm going to show you some of the footage that we got here and um, kind of explain to you what was going on. Not every trip is going to be fantastic, uh, I think, for most people. Uh, there are those select few who I think, no matter what trip they're on, no matter what kind of um, issues that they encounter, uh, they're just having a blast. And I envy those kind of people. I'd like to be one of those type of people, but as it stands, I'm just not um, at this time. So I'm going to show you some of the footage here and kind of chat with you about it. Um, I'm not one to constantly voice over things. Uh, I don't usually do that type of video, but seeing how this uh, footage is not complete, uh, it's, it's what went on. Well, folks, after several hours of driving, I mean several hours, uh, we have made landing at a, uh, uh, a put-in place here, a little outfitter spot, uh, right off of kind of a busy highway. But this is actually mile zero, I guess they call it, of the French Broad is what you're looking at down here. Beautiful river, starts off nice and small. Uh, the water levels is, is just right so far to get, to get fired up. And uh, definitely a big shout out, thank you to my wife, Jessie, uh, for uh, fo following or coming with us all these hours. She's gonna drive the truck back so we don't have to worry about coming an hour or so or even two hours back up once we're done, pick up the truck and then take it home. So it cuts off uh, a large, large amount of time. So. We've got our kayaks down here that we're getting uh, all packed up. That's what we'll work on now. And uh, just, just a nice little landing area to put into the river. We're going to get those packed up. And uh, we already did like a, I did a dry run of packing up at home and stuff. But now uh, there's always a little bit extra you put in uh, at the end. And so that's what I've done. Put in a little extra so we got to see if they all fit in there now. So we're going to do that. We're going to make a bathroom stop, try to fill up some water bottles, and then blow out of here. Getting ready for a trip is always fun, I and mean, when you're loading up the boats, you just expect the best. Really, you're just you're, 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 you're remembering the previous year's trips. You're sitting there, you're thinking, you know, man, I remember getting to go through these rapids and stuff. It's fun. I remember, you know, pitching the hammock, and I woke up the next morning. And it was a beautiful morning and stuff like that. So, you know, usually you have all that, or usually I have all that uh, in mind. And I think I did for the most part here. I, I was very excited to actually be able to go on another trip because um, I didn't. I actually didn't think I was going to be able to. So, as usual, the first time that I'm driving in North Carolina uh, to go on one of these big trips, last year I flew in and stuff, but this year I ended up driving up there. And uh, so it was real neat to see the mountains as we were driving up there. It was kind of an overcast day, um, but that didn't bother me. I, I knew we were going to end up getting, in, getting on the water, probably in some rain, and um, I don't have a problem with it. I actually quite enjoy uh, a little bit of the rain uh, in, in the clack. I think, it's, I think it, it sets a nice, a nice tone for it and stuff. If, if, if you've got gear uh, like skirts to keep yourself 
uh, somewhat dry, especially if it's cold rain, but uh, I don't think it was very cold that day. I think it was just about right. So anyways, cruising the mountains was a blast. Um, we actually got to go up and uh, the clouds were sitting down on the mountain and you can actually see where the clouds here are sitting on top of the mountain. And then pretty soon, uh, we're actually gonna be up there in it, which was the uh, first time I've ever done something like that. And uh, I found it was, the, it was actually very awesome. Uh, I was very excited because I had my um, uh, wilderness wilderness systems synonymous with 45 I just bought. Um, brand new in fact, uh, first and last time I'll probably buy a brand new boat. Um, just because of the fact that, well number one, the wilderness systems is a good boat, uh, but I would never take it on rivers like this again unless I absolutely had to. Um, I just basically, I considered myself just by getting bullied uh, in that boat because of its keel on the bottom um, and I had noticed a lot of times, which you'll see probably in the upcoming videos, that uh, when I would come through some of the rapids, if water was pouring around, it first hit the front of my boat, so the first part of the keel, and push it. Uh, and then when I got through it, it ended up pushing the back side, so there's a lot of um, adjusting and readjusting. The other thing I'll say about the Wilderness System Tsunami 145 is I don't like the rudder system. So when you put your foot in there and you got your pedals, you have to push one back and it kind of moves. It's, it's you know, kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a teeter-totter, if you will, when it goes up, the other one comes down kind of thing. The same thing with the pedals. Whereas with the Freon one, that's a little bit easier to use. The one I used on the New River trip, uh, your pedals stay in place and you just tilt them. So it's a rotation. So it's not an in and out, but it's more of a rotation uh, or pivot, I guess, if you call it. So. So this is the first part where um, we, we haven't gone far at all, and um, actually seeing these two like, this breeze through uh, this little shoals part, uh, the very shallow part. But for whatever reason, I get locked up uh, and locked apart on a rock, and it takes me a considerable amount of time uh, to get off of that rock. It wasn't a good start, it wasn't a bad start for the team. I just wasn't suspecting huh? to get stuck right off of that. Uh, it wasn't my hey, last time getting stuck. And unfortunately, I don't have it on camera, but I got stuck so bad on one part. Um, so at this point, I'm actually making a bit You can see me scoot past that big rock a little bit. So I'm getting my hands down on either side of the boat, and I'm actually trying to push off the bottom uh, of the river. And some is, is, parts, it's just not working. Uh, other times, I'll take my paddle, and I'll try to dig the paddle into the side, and kind of shovel my way off of it. And... Uh, but it just, I mean, I was throwing little bits at a time, and uh, I probably should have just got out of my boat, honestly, uh, at this point. But, um, and you can see where Pete's telling me to use my paddle to get down here. But um, I should, and he's calling and stuff at me too, but I, I just, I'm not hearing, I think, what he's saying, because I'm hearing this rush of water. And the last thing I'm going to do is step into that cold water. Um, so I'm going to try everything I got to get off, get off of here, uh, and hope I don't have to get out of my boat. Thanks. As is often the case, there are downed trees to meander around on the French Broad. This is just one such case. There were a couple of times where there were trees that had fallen across the river. You know, for the most part, it seemed like it was well maintained. I think the French Broad, French Broad is probably big enough river where uh, it, it, it stays maintained, I guess, for the most part. But there were a couple times when the trees had, and, had fallen over, and those can always be uh, those could be pretty dangerous. I don't think. Uh, well, actually, there were times where the French rod wasn't seeming to move very quick, and then there were some times where it did. Uh, and I don't think I got it on video either, but I did get turned sideways and pinned on both ends of my kayak uh, on on little limbs sticking out of it, which was a um, was not a good situation. Unfortunately, as it 
things that normally happen to me. I don't get footage of that. But you can see me go around this tree here. You can see where the water is actually picking, picking up speed uh, because it gets funneled. And so it picks up a little bit of speed with that. But uh, Okay, so the first night he came and went. It took us a while to find a camp. It wasn't a long time, but it took us a while to find a campsite. And the one that we found worked. I uh, actually ended up working out pretty good, uh, to be honest, when it was all said and done. But uh, it was kind of, a, to me, if I remember right, it was kind of we needed to take this campsite. Uh, because we weren't seeing very many and all, honestly during that first 50 miles there just wasn't a whole lot and so uh, I think that we decided we needed to take that spot it would work uh, it wasn't the best of course campsite of all times but we also didn't know when we would find another that may work and so what happened over, uh, overnight here for me is um, this is where things kind of started to take a little bit of a turn for me and it often does for me when it's time to set up uh, camp at night because I just haven't had as many nights out uh, um, hammock camping as I'd like to and uh, sometimes it's difficult for me to um, uh, or I wasn't as fast at setting up my stuff and I'm, I'm never fast at setting up uh, camp at least I wasn't at that night and so we got there um, I got my hammock out I was trying to find a place to, to, to put it up and there was like a massive and I mean a massive tree uh, that uh, Brian had cleared some, uh, was nice enough to clear some, some weeds away from it so I could wrap around it. So I did, uh, but it was massive. So, um, and it was so massive and then the bank, it was like a sloped bank, so it was so massive, but to get around the tree, you had to really like either try to climb up it or throw it around it or something, which I did, finally got it up. But then trying to get the, um, I got out my, my ridge line uh, for my, my tarp and it didn't have uh, the things I needed on it. In, in other words, it was missing some hardware on it. So I was, I was already kind of flustered by that uh, because uh, for some reason I don't like setting up camp at night um, unless we just can kind of throw it up and, and so my nose is not going to rain or something like that. And, I mean, I have done that before on the New River where we pulled up and we just uh, we basically just threw up camp real quick. We didn't do, put up tarps or nothing like that. I think we just threw up hammocks, jumped in and slept. We got there real late. It was dark. I think by the time we got to camp, we're pretty close to dark. Um, but on the, so on the new river trip that first night I was getting frustrated because I was having a difficult time trying to get that up. Uh, I couldn't get the line wrapped around the tree. You know the other guys had their stuff set up and here I am I'm the only one um, still left trying to do my thing. So Brian and Pete are sitting over in their chair. They, they've already got the chairs folded out. They're, they're making dinner and I'm still trying to find my stuff. I hate that. I hate trying to find my stuff in the kayak. Uh, because I, I do my best to try to pack it in a way that I know where it's at and stuff like that, but it seems like I always have to, to dig for it. And so I was already way behind, uh, you know, like the sun, stuff, the sun was going down and stuff like that, and so I was getting a little bit more and more uh, flustered. No, I, normally, I do get a little flustered sometimes, but this was like uh, maximum. Like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of things had transpired and stuff, and my mind wasn't just uh, where it needed to be, and all these little things uh, were taking their toll so much quicker. It was like my cup was completely full, and every drip would cause it to flow over a little bit and stuff like that. So I was trying to keep my cool. I was trying to be a good apple. And um, I didn't want to be a sour apple on the trip and stuff. But uh, So last night we camped on day one. And uh, we just now got back on the river. I didn't get much video last night because I was actually struggling to remember how to toot what I was supposed to be doing. So it took me a little bit to get my ridge line up, get my, my stuff all going. And uh, didn't get much sleep last night. Maybe got an hour or two maybe. And... Um, that's about the extent of it, but but uh, just waiting on Pete and Brian to, to launch back here. I already got in the water. Uh, it's about, I think, 8 or something in the morning. And uh, we're ready to get going today. I think we're shooting for about 25 miles. And once we get that, we'll be, we'll be in good shape and check for another campsite and stuff. But this one was good. It was a good campsite. It was just a little trail that was kind of sitting up off of, a, off of the river a little bit. Had a nice little uh, um, slope bank to get up onto and stuff, so that made it very... Very easy to camp for the first night. Um, it didn't feel super comfortable out there as usual on the first night, um, mostly because I had heard a big old splash, 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 like three times. I thought, what on earth is that? So I was talking with Pete. He said that uh, he got him kind of looked at it and said it was a beaver smacking his tail. So I guess that's what it was. But as I learned these different sounds and stuff, um, it makes it a little more comfortable to be in the outdoors and stuff. A lot of times you don't understand what's making that sound. It, it, can, be, uh, it can be a little wild sometimes. So.
If you take a look, you'll see that there is a rock, or I think it's a rock to my right. There's another rock to my left. I'm trying to hit them right in the middle, is what I'm trying to do. There's obviously water rushing from the right to the left because the obstructions here are like a caddy corner. It starts uh, to the right and then it extends on up in a diagonal pattern kind of to the left. But uh, So I'm thinking that I'm going to turn right into these uh, right through the middle stuff. You'll notice that I get shoved over uh, into this other rock. Now that has a lot to do with the timing, where I cut into it, not being used to the boat not understanding so much how the keel is gonna affect me uh, so much, but uh, ends up slamming me uh, into, this, into this rock. So I'm getting pushed way over, kaboom. That happened a lot. I was trying to learn as best I could. I was trying to get the feel for how close to get to an object that water is rushing around so it could push me away from it. Um, in some, some instances, I did pretty good. In other instances, not so much. And it, it started becoming frustrating to me on the trip. I noticed I was starting to like uh, my tsunami less and less and less, um, partly because I was getting pushed around a lot. Not, the, not that it's the boat's problem. It's, it's not the, the fault of the boat. The boat's doing what it's supposed to. Uh, it's meant to go straight with that keel on the bottom and does so um, really well with its rudder. Without a rudder, it can still go pretty straight. Whereas my prion without a rudder is all over the place. But, uh, so, so it's not a fault of the Wilderness Systems Tsunami 145 that I'm getting pushed around with it. It's just the fact that the water is acting on those keels and shoving me around. And my skill set with that boat, being pretty brand new with it, I think I've been out on it like once, before, once or twice before that maybe. Uh, but, but not in any rabbits at all. My skill set wasn't, wasn't near what it, what it should have been to start to, um, to kind of navigate this. And I, I think it maybe made it worse a little bit because there was a lot of weight in the boat uh, as well. So it was very difficult for me to turn. Um, I found out very early on when we were doing the trip that it was very, very difficult for me to turn that boat around. And it took a long time for me to turn that boat around. So I had to use, when I used my rudder, I had to use it strong. So it wasn't just a little twist of the rudder. Like if I'm in my prion, then of course it doesn't take much rudder action for me to spin if I want to or to correct. Uh, but with the tsunami, it took um, like 90% rudder. Um, if, you, if you're talking about 100% being as far as it can go, 90% rudder to, to get me to turn. Um, sometimes, and a little bit further down the video, there were spots like shoals and stuff, or maybe ledges, I think it might be called or something, where you know we had to do a lot of um, uh, bobbing and weaving through some stuff, which we could do with the boats, um, but I found myself having to lean it, try to edge it, which I don't edge near as far as a person could in order to make this happen, but I was trying to edge and paddle to try to turn that boat, and in some instances it worked quite well, um, but when I had to do that and try to edge around something while water was pushing on me, um, I wasn't edging enough to get the keel up, and so it was still acting on my keel at the same time, and was creating a very frustrating situation, so I'm not sleeping. Um, you know, things are, are frustrating, my cup's already full, my mind's not in the right place, and I'm getting pushed around in my boat. I don't have the skill set I need for it. I don't have the practice in it that I need for it. And um, I'm just letting get th things get to me. And I was very, I was not liking, uh, not appreciating my tsunami, and um, felt like I had definitely had the wrong boat for the type of water that I was in. Not because, again, the boat is bad, but because of how the keel is working for me. So I'm following Pete and Brian down the river, the French Broad River, and uh, it's interesting because I get an opportunity to uh, compare this one with last year's trip, which was the New River. And uh, for me, it seems like it's just completely two different rivers. So this one is quite a bit smaller, um, but has a lot of uh, trees in the water, trees down, so it makes it kind of fun where you can have to interweave through most of these. And uh, <clears throat> but it's been a pretty cool day. Uh, a lot of these uh, shaded spots you get into can be quite cool. And then when you pop out in the sun, it feels great. Uh, a lot of neat little scenery. Seen some pretty cool houses up on the hill. Uh, that looked pretty cool uh, when you're riding past them and stuff. Uh, as far as campsites go, we haven't actually seen, uh, well, not very many of them. Uh, there may be one or two. Uh, one we made up last night worked out really well. And I think we saw one that might have worked after that, but could also have been done. Cow pasture, so 
We got about 25 miles to go today, and I think we've chewed up a good couple of them so far. We've only been on the river for about an hour and a half, but uh, it's almost time for a snack. Folks, we have pulled off the river. Uh, we must be pushing somewhere around 30 miles. We pulled off the river, and a nice little, uh, well, it's like uh, people are going to drive down their boats and put them in. Pete's going to attempt to walk up, and uh, we just got a tip from a couple guys that was uh, in a boat tied to a tree, not fishing. Uh, said that there was maybe some pizza down here, a pizza joint just right across the bridge. Uh, they said not even a mile walk or something like that, so Pete's actually going to walk over there and see if we can't end up with a pizza tonight. So that would be a real nice touch. Uh, we still have yet to find uh, a campground, so what we'll do is we'll eat some pizza, then we'll kind of go on down the river after we stretch our legs and stuff and uh, hope to score us a nice uh, spot to camp tonight. So that's the goal. I'll send you a sticker so you can stick it on your truck. Yeah, man. I will. Yeah. Right on, man. Y'all be safe. Y'all be safe. You too. Good luck with the misses. Yeah. I think we'll be all right. I got, I, I'm taking the kids fishing later. <laughs> there you go. Tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Friends, we are still on the river on day two, and we must have been pushing 30 some miles by now. And um, that's the prospects, the camping prospects, are just not uh, plentiful, should we say. So, if we're not having any luck finding any, uh, we checked in a couple little inlets to the river, you know, paddled up in them a little bit, just still aren't able to find anything that's going to work yet. So. Um, the day continues on, kind of drags on a little bit. So we may not be able to do too much in the video here on day two, just because the likelihood of it being dark when we get to a campsite uh, is, is getting higher and higher by the minute. So uh, we'll keep pressing on. We've already had dinner and stuff. We'll, we'll keep pushing on, keep our eyes open for a campsite. Um, I'm just hoping we find one that we don't have to end up um, just taking what we can get, because that usually means, means camping somewhere that's not really the most uh, pleasant. So usually takes me a little bit to set up camp anyway, so we'll see what happens. Then keep the fingers crossed and uh, probably see you guys on day three. Uh-oh. There's a croc. Sam. About to tap that, I believe. I think the other one's easier, buddy. Yeah. Adam, if you can nose in that cone, like ramming speed, go ahead and get up in there. Just made it real fun. <laughs> so it's real deep right here. Yeah. Great. Look. But it's mucky. Right. Deeper. 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 Deeper.
Yeah, I'm gonna lift up. You pull and we gotta get the lip up here, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. It's a bungee. Here we go. Okay, so we found a spot. We're off the river. We it's actually a, a pretty good spot. It is a good spot. Included. There is a little bit of roadway noise over there, but that should quiet down. But yeah. The trees are good. Yeah, man. So. And it's. Uh, what okay. time is it? I have no idea. So, thank you, Lord. We got work to do. Yeah, let's get to work. tell from this part of the video you'll see that my my, my talking is is considerably weaker um, and the voice isn't as strong I'm um, taking deep breaths um, it's just not things just aren't clicking um, I don't it seems like my brain function isn't isn't uh, isn't uh, working like I'd like it to but I need to point out in this video here that's why I'm pausing here that Pete had um, actually set up a hammock I think it was his plan set up a hammock let me lay down in it and let me sleep. Unfortunately, I did get get kind of drowsy in that. We didn't have enough time for me to actually fall asleep and um, uh, really recover like I'd hoped to, but um, kudos to him. It was a fantastic gesture. Uh, just one more thing to point out that these guys go the extra step, went the extra step for me to try to help me um, recover as best I can and have a good trip. There just wasn't much they could do, um, but I, I, I was so appreciative for it. And I try to keep my spirits up as much as I can, but uh, you know, truth be told, it was it, it, at this point it was difficult, and it probably was at the point of no return for me. So, just uh, took a break right here on this island. Got to sit in him for a little bit, snooze, get a little rest, 10:15, and we'll be moving on. It's been a good day, good good paddle. Um, the river has definitely changed from what it was. It was a small, kind of ugly looking river. It's definitely widened out now a little bit. Got a bunch of uh, floaters out and stuff having a good time. And, and uh, so hopefully tonight we'll be able to find a campsite a lot easier than we did last night. So, onward. Where we are getting back in from the portage. Nothing to it. Unless we gotta actually do it. Home for night three. Just gonna hang in amongst some little trees on that little island. Ought to be alright. Avoid the poison ivy.